Why did that feel so good? In case you haven't noticed, people are feeling more stressed and angry these days. According to Gallup's Global Emotion Report, more than one in four experienced sadness and slightly fewer experienced anger. So what can we do about it? Well, you can try meditation, but this works too. I visited her lab to find out more about the roles that aggression plays in our lives. Welcome to the lab. This is way nicer than either of our labs in grad school. I think so too. Anna Grad and I did our PhDs in neurobiology together, and now she runs a lab here at Princeton. Here you go. Thank you. One part of her research is decoding how the brain creates that feel-good energy we experience at the rage cage. That energy has to do with rewards. Animals that are more aggressive, to a point, right, they basically can accrue more resources. They have more territory, which means more food, which means more access to females. In this experiment, a male mouse learns that when he pokes his nose into one of these two holes at the back of this box, he can either choose between sex or aggression. When he opts for aggression, a submissive mouse drops into the box. The fight is fixed, and the dominant mouse is conditioned to know he'll win. He'll choose aggression unless the other mouse starts fighting back. We know that they get a surge of dopamine at the end of a fight. It's a little bit unclear about whether this dopamine has to do with the action of the fighting or whether the outcome. So is that why we felt so good at the rage cage? I mean, I was definitely experiencing a, a surge of dopamine. I don't know about you. That natural high incentivizes mice and humans to go back for more. Animals evolved to do this because aggression is very important for survival. There are two flavors of aggression. Proactive aggression is when animals seek out aggression, just like in the nose poking experiment. This aggression tends to have a goal, like expanding your territory or relieving stress by breaking stuff. Then there's reactive aggression. This is the aggression where you, you say something terrible to me and I, I punch you in the face. It's a response to a threat, like when your territory is infiltrated. A territory and aggression kind of go hand in hand. So when animals cross into other parts of the territory, they might change their aggression levels. Anna Grant uses this wheel to track the relationship between territory, aggression, and rank. So mice really like to pee <laughs> and they create these territorial marks. Unclaimed territory doesn't always exist. So the mouse has the decision to make, especially if he's not dominant. So our hypothesis is that when he's in his home, he feels less anxiety. And when he's in the territory of others, he feels more anxiety. I can relate to that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we don't yet know what he's feeling when he's in expansion mode in the new territory. That's important because how you're feeling affects aggression levels too, whether you're a mouse or a human. When the non-dominant mouse stays put, there's more activity in certain neurons that are anxiety inducing. These act almost like a break. They lower the activity of the hypothalamus, a region that drives aggression. In extreme situations, this break completely goes off, and mice feel overly confident. You get something called septal rage, which is animals get hyper aggressive. But under more normal conditions, we th think there's something a little bit more nuanced happening where it's not just like an on off switch. This brain network helps animals figure out what the best course of action is, given their chances of coming out on top. Turn on aggression or just back away. Neuroscientists used to think that these aggression levels were hardwired or kind of preset. But in fact, there's a lot of plasticity. They're changing all the time as a function of your experience. Which makes sense, since aggression is supposed to improve our chances of survival. And part of that hinges on adapting. After the lab tour, I sat down with Anna Gret to talk more about what kinds of situations make you more prone to aggression and what we can do about it. Stress can make you kind of very overreactive to certain kinds of cues in your environment loud sounds, loud noises. Those are the things that promote this kind of reactive aggression as opposed to the sort of cold aggression-seeking behavior that we talked about in the lab. She told me that understanding what triggers aggression can help us come up with ways to prevent unnecessary violence, either with medication or behavioral interventions. So we went to a rage cage. We did. Is that a good way to deal with anger management? I think for some people it might work in the very short term but it's definitely not a long-term solution. Overall, you'd probably be better off if you steered yourself into a slightly calmer pursuit. That could mean meditation, therapy, or journaling. Learning when and how to defend yourself is also important. In her experiments, mice that learned to defend themselves also sought out more social interactions and treats, like sugar water. Aggression, I would say, is about 25 to 50 percent heritable, so it's determined by your genes, which means the other sort of half of aggression is you know, based on your experience. So aggression kind of begets aggression. 